God blows our minds. The English language is very interesting. And many people who don't have English as a first language often surprised by some of the things that we say. There is this thing that we call slang, this thing that we call, um, what they call it, um, my God, just quotables. And um, these things that we insert into the English language, uh, these popular phrases, that's what it is, these popular phrases that we insert uh, into our language often confuse those who don't have English as a first language. Because many times they hear what we say and they take it literally. Uh, when we say certain things, they take it as is. But those of us who know English, those of us who grew up around it saying certain things, we know the difference between that which is literal and metaphorical. Well, there's a particular phrase that is in the English language called mind blowing. We say, this thing has blown my mind. Now, of course, literally it has not exploded our brains in our skulls, uh, but it's something that we say when something is so impressive, something is so amazing, something is so awesome, something is so magnificent that it goes beyond what our brains can comprehend. I look for an actual definition of this popular phrase called mind blowing. And uh, I went to Merriam and Webster, my two good friends, but I was very disappointed at the definition that they gave. Uh, so I, I got academic for a moment and went to the Cambridge Dictionary. And their definition really encompassed what I believe is being communicated today. Uh, the definition that they gave of mind blowing is something that is extremely exciting or surprising, often difficult to understand or imagine. So when someone says that this is mind blowing, what they are saying is that it has gotten my mind in such a place that I cannot imagine the thing that I'm experiencing. I cannot conceive the thing that I'm experiencing. I can't give language to the thing that I'm experiencing. It goes beyond my brain's ability to not only comprehend, but to communicate. Now, some of you are saying, what in the world does this have to do uh, with what Paul is talking about in his letter to the church at Ephesus? Well. Paul is praying for the believers, and if you start at about verse uh, 14, it says that Paul uh, was communicating to them that every so often he likes to hit his knees and he starts praying for certain things. I like how Paul prays for the church. Can I tell you and break this prayer down that Paul prays for these believers at Ephesus? Because y'all looking at me real strange. What Paul prays for these people at Ephesus uh, is that they will have strength by way of the Holy Spirit. He prays that in spite of what what's going on. He prays that in spite of the difficulties, the tests, the trials, the circumstances, the disappointment, that they will not find a strength that is in their flesh, but that a strength will rise up out of them by way of the Holy Spirit. It is for this reason we say greater is he that is in us yes, than sir. he that is in the world. I know for you that's just something to say, but for those of us who really believe in God, we know that every so often we find ourselves in a space, in a place in life where there is a, a, a test or trial that goes beyond what I can handle in the flesh. It goes beyond what my mind can figure out. It goes beyond what I can actually bear myself. But thanks be unto God that the Holy Spirit, the paracletus, the comforter, as he's yes, described, sir. will rise up in me and give yes, me a strength. Sir. I didn't know I had. Some of y'all mamas can testify. You didn't think you could handle motherhood when you first found yourself in it because them kids was acting a plum fool. But a strength rose up in you and you was able to to mama them like no other mama could mama them. Daddies, y'all know the struggle. We carry the whole house on our back and there are moments where the world beats us up so bad that we ain't got nothing left. And if that ain't enough, we get home and we find warfare in our home. Yes, and you sir. really want to give up. You want to hand the uh, baby girl the keys and bounce. Get in your car, drive into the sunset, go to the store, never come back. But a strength rises up in you. Some of y'all know that. A strength rises up in you uh, from the inside of you and that is the Holy Spirit. And Paul is praying that for the believers that they will find strength by the Spirit. That's verse 16. But then we get down to verse 17, and he prays that they will have stability in love. 
Oh my God, y'all missed that. Yes, that sir. they will have stability yes, in love. Okay, the reason you can't shout is because you know some unstable lovers. Uh, yes, you've fallen in love with folks who fell out of love with you. But Paul says, listen, I need there to be stability in the love of the church. That when folks come into the house of the Lord, they don't find a shaky love, but they find a firm love. They find a love that loves the hell out of them. They find a love that loves them beyond their circumstances. Yes, they find a love that's not conditional, but unconditional, unlimited, a love that never runs out, a love that never fails, a love that never comes to an end. I'm quoting 1 Corinthians, y'all yes, missed it. They find a stable love. He says, I pray that there's stability in your love. But Mother Dawson, it gets gooder and gooder because then if we go down to verse 18, not only does he want a stable in our love, he wants a sound concerning God's love. He says, listen, I pray that you will be able to comprehend the love of God. Yes, and here's the thing about it. He's, it's, it's really a vain prayer because God's love is incomprehensible. I don't know about you, but I ain't figured God's love out yet because I know I, how ratchet I can be sometimes. I know how much of a mess I can be sometimes. Can I just be honest? God's love don't make sense to me because the truth of the matter is I would have threw me away a long time ago, but God just keeps on loving me. And Paul says, I pray that your finite minds can somehow comprehend the incomprehensible love of God. A God who loves in spite of our hate. A God who loves in spite of our mistakes. A God who loves in spite of our shortcomings. I pray that your mind can conceive the love of God, but there's a purpose behind it because that's verse 18. If you go down to verse 19, he says, I need you to understand God's love because I need you to show God's love. I'm preaching already. He says, listen, I don't just want you to get it. I want you to give it. I pray that you will get to a place where you understand God's love in such a way that you can then love the unlovable. Because here's the thing. When you finally come to the conclusion that God's love don't make sense, you stop trying to make sense of your love. Because if you're going to have the love of God, baby, it ain't going to make sense. You're going to love folks who can't stand your guts. You're going to love folks who run your name in the dirt. You're going to love folks who tag you in nonsense on social media. You're going to love folks that uh, spread all kinds of rumors and lies about you. Because the love of God don't make sense. And if we are the image and likeness of God, then baby, we ought to have a love that don't make sense either. Folks ought to question some of the folks you love because they know that they are unlovable. Paul says, I pray that not only will you have a soundness of God's love, but through that soundness, you will somehow be able to show God's love. And oh my God, here's the part that I love. He ends this prayer by saying, now unto him, yes, who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power at work in us. This is how he is choosing to end his prayer. He prays all these things. He says, God, I pray that you will strengthen them by the spirit. God, I pray that you will make them stable in their love. God, I pray that you will give them soundness concerning God's love. God, I pray that you will allow them to show your love. And then he seals this prayer by saying, now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. I've prayed these things that I've prayed and I've prayed it to the one who can do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. In essence, he says, I'm praying an impossible prayer, but I'm praying to an impossible God. My God, is there anybody here who's ever prayed to a God who could do the impossible, who could move the immovable? Uh, we serve a God that says, baby, stop climbing the mountain and speak to the mountain. Tell it where to go. We serve a God who specializes in the impossible. And Paul wants us to know that he is a God that blows our minds. Can I share with you all some things that makes our God mind-blowing? Preach, sir. I, I, have I got y'all yet? Y'all with me? Well, let's do this thing. What makes our God mind-blowing? I'm going to give you three in a possible. Um, the first thing that makes our God mind blowing, I, this ain't going to sound too profound. I'm going to go ahead and set the right expectation that when I say this, you probably going to think that I missed something, but I promise I didn't. The first thing that makes our God mind blowing is that he's able. Amen. Amen. I'm going to swing back around for you. The first thing that makes our God mind blowing yes. is that he's able. Yes, sir. Listen, I ain't making it up. It's verse 20. He says, now unto him that is able. Listen, I ain't going no further than that right there. Because the first thing that makes my God mind blowing 
is that he's able. Yes, sir. And really, I could close my Bible up, close my tablet up, put this little stand down, grab my book bag, and go home. Yeah. Because that's enough to run off right there. Yes, because sir. the truth of the matter is, there are people all over this globe that are praying to gods who ain't able. That, that ain't able. Yes, but we serve a God who not only uh, talks the talk, but he walks oh, the yeah. walk. We serve a God that's able. And this is how Paul starts his, or concludes his prayer. He says, I've asked all these things, yeah. but I've asked it to the one that is able. Now unto him that is able. Okay, you can't get excited about that because you don't know what that means. So um, uh, let's take a look at the etymology of this word that we translate able. It is the word dunamai, dunamai. And this word dunamai is actually the root from where we get the word dynamite. Uh, it is an explosive ability or an explosive power now unto him that has explosive power now yes, unto sir. him that has explosive ability it is from this place I believe that science and theology come together because scientists have studied the universe and they have concluded that it all started from a big bang. Well, the truth of the matter is the church for a long time was trying to talk that away that no, 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 there was no big bang. It was just a big God. But I would argue that it was both a big God and a big bang. What am I saying? I believe that we serve a God who the Bible says speaks those things that be not as though they are. And Genesis backs that, that thing up because it says in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And when you begin to jump down, the way he created the heavens and earth was a call and response method that he called a thing yes, and then nature responded to that yes, thing. Sir. He said, let there be, and it yes, was. And I would argue that when my God talks, it's explosive. So the big bang that they talking about was my God saying, let there be. And when he said, let there be, boom, it was. Yes, sir. It's due to my e. Now unto him, that do my e, but it's not just to be able. It's not just to have power explosively, but helps word studies takes it a deep uh, a step further. And I discovered that is again not to just be able, not to just have power, but here's the part I love to show ability. Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's not just him who has power, not just him who has ability, but it's the one who shows ability. Yes, sir. Okay, what am I saying? He's a God who you can see what he does. Yes. And I said that too fast because y'all are too calm. Not only do we have a God who's able to do it, he's a God who does it and we're able to see it. I remember yes, back in school we had this thing called show and tell where you would show up to school and you would bring something to show the class and then you would tell them about it. We serve a God who's been showing and telling before show and tell. Yes, that whatever he says, baby, you can guarantee you're going to see it because he operates with dunamai. He's able. He has power. He's a God who says a thing and the thing becomes. Okay, but as impressive as that is, as impressive as that is, uh, uh, and I think we get too wrapped up there, we're very impressed by what God is able to do. And the truth of the matter is, God is able to do anything. But if, if you've ever prayed like I've prayed, one of the things that you've learned is though, even though God is able to do anything, God don't do everything. Yes, sir. Ooh. Yes, sir. God is able to do anything, but he does not do everything. Yes, sir. Now, now that, that I struggle with that because we know he's all powerful. Mm -hmm. Why would a God who can do anything not do everything. Why is it that there are times that we pray and we ask God, he does not answer? Why is it that there are certain things we request of God, but we don't get those things? Because he's a God who's able. Somebody say he's able. He's able. Well, I've come to the conclusion that anytime I pray and I don't receive it, it has nothing to do with God's ability. Because God is able to do anything. Yes, sir. But even though God is able to do anything, God chooses not to do everything. Now, y'all are impressed by what God is able to do. Can I be honest with you? I have matured to a place where I'm not just impressed by what God is able to do. I'm impressed by what God is able to do, but chooses not to do. Wow. 
And that's a, a level of maturity that most of the church ain't got to. But I'm going to tell you how I got to that conclusion. Because, again, when I accepted the fact that anytime God tells me no, it has nothing to do with his ability. That anytime God does not grant my request, it has nothing to do with his ability. I came to the conclusion that there has to be something more at work. And here's the thing. If God has the ability to show what he's able to do, but he ain't showing me, that means I'm probably missing something else that he's showing me. Yes, sir. Y'all are missing it. Okay. God has the ability to show his ability, but there are moments in life where I pray and God decides that I'm not going to show you what I can do. I'm going to show you something else. Huh. Okay. So again, if I pray and I ask God for something or if I'm believing God for something, but he decides not to do the thing, I know he's able, but for some reason he's able, but he's just not doing. Now, why in the world, God, if you're able, would you not do? Well, again, I, I can show you that I can do it, or I can also show you something else. Okay, um, I'm going to see if I can make this plain real quick, and then I'm going to bring this thing home and move on to the next point. Uh, how many parents do I have? In the building, you done you done pushed out a couple babies. Amen. We give I'm God praise. Thank you. No babies, <laughs> Amen. Listen, don't put your shoe in it if it, if your foot don't fit. Um, as a parent, you all engage in a strange behavior. I used to wonder why in the world you all would do this, but I got a revelation, and and, and I think TJ and Gabby who have these precious little ones here uh, can, can really appreciate what I'm about to say. Um, most parents, when they hear their babies crying, they go running to the baby. But I noticed that a certain point, my man said every night, faithfully, don't miss one. I notice, and he's going to notice, that a season's going to come where they're going to stop responding to the cry. Now, one would argue what sort of cruel parents would allow their children to cry and not respond. I'm calling CPS today. Why would you allow your children to cry and you not respond to their cry? Well, listen, I don't have no kids, but I did a little homework. And what I discovered is that children eventually reach a point uh, where the parent recognizes that though they have the ability to soothe them, they want to activate a power in the baby to self-soothe. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's not that the parents aren't able to soothe the baby. They're making a decision that the child has hit a place in a space in life where there is a power in them that they haven't tapped into. And the only way they're going to tap into that power is if I pull back my power. I have the ability, but I'm going to withhold the ability because I want to activate an ability in them. Ah, light bulb just went off. The reason we serve a God who's able to do anything but chooses not to do everything is because he don't want you to be lazy. We serve a God who, who recognizes that when you walk with him long enough, there should come a point in time where the things you cry about, you don't cry about no more. There should come a time where the things you're praying about ought to become other things that you're praying about. And maybe, just maybe, if there's some things you've been praying about that God just don't seem to be moving on, baby, he might be saying congratulations you just graduated. I need you to change your prayer life and I need you to grow up and start moving and tapping into the power. I'm preaching already that I'm putting you from the beginning. Peter tells us that God has given us everything pertaining to life and God. And help your neighbor mature on today and say, neighbor, neighbor. Grow, up. grow up. I know it hurt. Make somebody else mad. Look across the room and say, other neighbor. Other neighbor. I didn't made one enemy today. I made one Might as well make it two. Grow up. Grow up. Our God is able. And as impressive as that is, what's more impressive to me is that we serve a God who understands that though he's able to do anything, he chooses not to do everything. That, that, that there are things that he trusts you eventually to do. At some point, TJ and Gabby are going to start trusting these little ones to make their own little hot pockets in the microwave. 
at some point, they're going to trust them to go get their own little snack at snack time. I know they can't wait for this one. At some point, they're going to stop cleaning up their messes and trust them to clean up their own mess. And that's a revelation for some of you because you've been praying and asking God to clean your messes up for a long time. And God is telling you today, he sent me to 82 Afton Parkway, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23702, to tell you clean up your own mess in this season. That you serve a God who's able, but he's also giving you the ability. Somebody yeah. shout, he's able. He's yeah. able. Even when he says no. Yes. And that's a tough pill for us to swallow. Yes. But here's the mind-blowing thing to me. It blows my mind what he's able to do. But it also blows my mind at what he's able to do but chooses not to do because he's trying to get me to see something I ain't seen before. Amen. He's able. What makes our God mind-blowing is the dunamai, that he's able, he shows that he's able. But what's more telling of the power that he has is that with all the power that he has, he can pull it back and allow me to learn what I need to learn. Can I give y'all another one? Okay. Another reason our God is mind-blowing is because he does above and beyond. Mm -hmm. Oh, I thought I was in a church. He does above and beyond. Help your neighbor real quick. I think they're struggling to comprehend. Tap on the shoulder. Say neighbor. neighbor. Okay, make sure you tap them on the shoulder. Say neighbor. neighbor. My, God My God does above and beyond. Above and beyond. Put some emphasis on that and. He does above and beyond. I'm not making it up. And we're still in the same verse. Verse 20. He said he's able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask a thing. Oh, my God. Now, again, this is another one of the moments where I should really just be able to close my tablet, close my Bible, lock this down, grab my book bag, and head to my car. But y'all want me to work this morning, so we're going to work. One more time, it says he's able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that we ask or think. Now, what you should notice is that there's a whole lot of adjectives here. He does exceeding, not exceedingly, I'm going to help y'all out, exceeding, <laughs> abundantly, we're going to get delivered from exceedingly today, exceeding, <laughs> matter of fact, practice, somebody say exceeding, exceeding, amen, I don't want to hear you misquote it no more, exceeding, abundantly, yes. above, now, something interesting is happening here, the first word here, exceeding, is the Greek word, hooper, now this word, hooper, means above, it means beyond. But here's the part that blesses my socks off. Helps word studies takes it a, deep, a, a step further and says it is to extend benefit that reaches beyond the present situation. What? Amen. It is to extend benefit that reaches beyond the present situation. Okay, here's why you ought to be excited. Because what I just told you is that your God is able to extend benefits to you that go beyond your present situation. Yes, okay, let me help you out. You're praying too small. You're praying and asking God to bless the present situation. God is saying, baby, my benefits go beyond the present situation. Okay, let me make this plain for you. In essence, he's saying you're praying for the right now. But I'm, I'm so God that I'm able to extend benefits that not only bless you in the present situation, but it will bless you in the next situation. Okay, yes, what am I saying? We serve a God that says, I'll take your present prayer and bless you in the future with it as well. That, oh my God, we call it this, the gift that keeps on giving. I'm a God who will bless you in your now as well as your next off of a petition in your now. He says, my benefits extend beyond and reaches beyond the present situation. But then there's that word abundantly. Can I tell you something? Yes. That word abundantly, when you look at the original man manuscript in the Greek, does not exist. Yeah, yeah. Abundantly was added when it was translated. Yeah. Huh. But then that takes us to the word above. Hey, Amen. She's at full attention. I love it. <laughs> uh, it so we go from exceeding abundantly is not there to above. Can I tell you something that messed me up? The word that we translate above is also the Greek word hooper. <laughs> now unto him who's able to do hooper and hooper. Okay, so actually 
we did above, but it's really exceeding, exceeding. Yes, so now unto him who's able to do exceeding, exceeding all that we ask or think. So where does abundantly come from? Oh, it makes sense. Instead of them saying exceeding, exceeding, they say that we serve a God who keeps on exceeding to the point that we have an abundance of exceeding that our minds can't even fathom. And so he does exceeding in abundance. He does exceeding abundantly because our God keeps on exceeding. And here's the shout right here that God never stops exceeding his exceeding. Yes, sir. Ah, that just when God exceeded what you were used to, he exceeds it again. In other words, the moment you think God can't get no better, he gets better. The moment you think God can't get no gooder, he gets gooder. The moment you think God can't get greater, he gets greater. He does exceeding, exceeding. And this is where we get abundantly because he, he exceeds in such an abundance, it goes beyond what we can ask or think. Yes, sir. Now, now, now that's that's something in itself because it says he will exceed all. All. Can I can I tell you the Greek meaning of all? All. Okay. All is fullness. There's nothing beyond all. There's never, oh, he gave me all and then some. Baby, it's either all or nothing. He says he does exceeding abundantly above all. All that's definitive, but it, there, there's something that comes after that. All that we can ask, okay. God wants to expand our expectation. If you can ask it, there's still more. You know. God's ability from a limited place because you pray from a place you can articulate. Ah, can I tell you why I love the Holy Spirit? Because when I have the Holy Spirit and I pray in the Holy Spirit, I go from limited to unlimited. Because he says, I'll exceed what you can ask. So the moment I can't ask no more, I can tap into the Holy Spirit yes. who starts asking for things I can't articulate. Yes. And this is why God blows our minds. Yes, because some of y'all prayed for one thing Talk, and found yourself with another thing. Yes. And this is why we can celebrate the fact that God can do anything, but he don't do everything. Yes, because sir. we can be honest enough to say, God, I prayed for this, yes. but I'm so glad you sent that. Yes. Because if you gave me this, yes. it would have been limited. But because you gave me that, it blew my mind. Yes. He says, if you can ask it, it still ain't big enough. And this is why the Bible says we don't always know what we ought to pray. But the Holy Spirit makes intercession for us through groanings and utterances that we cannot understand. Baby, listen, it goes beyond speaking in tongues. Can I tell you how bad my God is? That if I sit on the edge of the bed and I just groan, that goes up as a prayer. That I don't even know how to articulate. And God will send a knock at the door and somebody will bless me with the thing my mouth could and even form to ask God for. He does exceeding, exceeding. What am I saying? You thought you could only get what you opened your mouth for, but we serve a God that the Holy Ghost will go on your behalf and bring down things from heaven your mind can't even conceive. And that's the latter part. He says, if you can ask it, it still ain't big enough. Oh, but this is the part that messes me up because I got a big imagination. He says, Mike, as big as your imagination is, if you can imagine it, it still falls short of what I can do. Yeah. <laughs> And this is why I don't see how anybody miss a Sunday at church because I need to know about this God who exceeds not only what my mouth can articulate, but what my mind can imagine. And I don't know what your imagination is like, but I got a big old imagination. I can imagine things from here to California. I got a big imagination. And to hear that as big of an imagination that I have, that my God has the unmitigated gall and audacity to tell me that as big as my imagination is, he's bigger than that. My God. I now I see why David says, oh, magnify the Lord with me. In essence, he's saying when you worship God, you better make them bigger than your mind can conceive because many of you need things that are bigger than what your hands can handle. If your mind can imagine it, then it's still too small. He says our God does exceeding abundantly above all 
we can ask or think, which means there's nothing you can ask for or think about that God can't do. Amen. And even the things that you don't ask for or think about, God can do. Uh, in other words, it's a win-win situation when you pray to your God. Because even what you ask for, he can do. But even what you don't ask for, he can do. And many times, and this is where God is trying to get us to in this season, many times we ask for things and we get mad at God when he doesn't do it. But the truth of the matter is, what we need to understand is that the reason he didn't to he didn't do it many times is because it fell short of what his goodness can actually provide for you. Can, the, can anybody here thank God for what he was able to do but didn't do? Because the truth of the matter is he was able to send you a boo but the boo you was asking for you would have been settling for. Listen, he was able to give you the job but the job you was asking for, you would have been settling for. He was able to open up the door, but the door you was asking him to open didn't have anything behind it that you really would have got blessed from. Is there anybody here that can give God praise for what he was able to do, but what he chose not to do? Because he can do above and beyond what we ask or think. Okay, I'm going to see if I can make this plain. Move on to the last point. Um... One of my favorite TV personalities is a man by the name of Ron Popel. Now, unless you grew up in like the late 80s, early 90s, that name don't really mean nothing to you. But Ron Popel is an inventor and the founder of a company called Ronco. Now, some of y'all should remember this from a sermon I preached some time ago. But Ronco is this amazing company that invents all of these things. But one of the things that Ronco was famous for was cooking products. What I loved about a Ronco product is that all of his products always did multiple things. Uh, he would start the commercial off and say, hey, do, do you want a rotisserie of chicken? Well, my new standard microwave baking of grill oven can do that. And he said, you want rotisserie of chicken? Great, you can do that. And here's the phrase I love, but wait, there's more. You want to grill some hot dogs and hamburgers? It can do that. But wait, there's more. You want to bake a cake? It can do that. But wait, there's more. You want to fry some chicken? It can do that. But wait, there's more. You want to bake some muffins? It can do that. But wait, there's more. Here's the thing, though, Bishop. No matter how long the commercial was, eventually he would stop at some point. Can I tell you why I love the Lord? Because as impressive as Ron Cole is, I know a company called God Cole. And here's the thing about God Cole. God Cole has an unlimited commercial that if I can ask it, he can do it. If I can thank it, he can do it. Need a healer? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need a deliverer? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need a way maker? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Uh, need somebody to bring you out? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need somebody to open a door? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need generational curses broken? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need somebody to get out of a bind? He can do that. But wait, there's more. I wish you would start filling in the blank. Need somebody to regulate your mind? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need somebody to reign over your peace? He can do that. But wait, there's more. Need somebody to lead you uh, in the path of righteousness for his name's sake? He can do that. But wait, there's more. We serve a God who knows no limits and he exceeds every time he exceeds that we serve a God that goes higher and higher and higher and his blessings are so inexhaustible. I don't know why we don't start shouting as soon as we walk through the door, but I see why it makes sense that the psalmist says I enter into his gates with thanksgiving and I enter into his courts with praise. Why? Because that's somebody who has finally realized the truth that I cannot praise my God beyond how amazingly he blesses me. And so I'll try my best knowing that I'll always fail because God is going to keep blowing my mind. Yes, sir. Next time you're impressed by something God does, I want you to pause and say, but wait, there's more. And when our expectation gets to that place, we'll praise God for what he's doing. But then we'll also start to praise God for what he hasn't done yet. Because he's going to continue to blow our minds. He's able. He does above and beyond. Can, can I give you all one more? Now, here's, here's the part that blesses me. 
The text says, and I'm going to lose some of y'all on this one. I already know I'm going to lose some of y'all. But not only is he able, not only does, does he do above and beyond, but he works according to power at work in us. Yes. Yes. I got two. <laughs> got two on that one. Yeah. <laughs> Try one more time. He works. I, I got the baby too, so I'm good. He works according to power yes, sir. at work in us. Yes. I'm going to tell you why most of y'all can't shout. Because yeah. you don't like you that much. Oh. You, you, you don't. Now, don't get me wrong. I know the Bible says that we, uh, we shouldn't think more highly of ourselves yeah. than we are. But don't miss it. He says, don't think more highly. He doesn't say that you can't think highly. And the problem is some of us are humble to a fault that we don't recognize that God can do a miraculous and amazing things through us. And this is why God hasn't been answering some of y'all prayers, because he's trying to activate something in you so that you go from being a recipient of the miracle to being the one working out the miracle yourself. How amazing would our churches be yeah. if if every time a miracle was needed, God didn't have to step down from the throne, exactly. but you could get the miracle right next to you. Uh -huh. yeah. exactly. He says, according to the power that worketh in us. Okay. The Greek word for power here, I thought it was going to be the same one, dunamai, but it's actually dunamis. Still the root word of that word dynamite. So it's talking about something explosive. However, it is a miraculous power, yes, miraculous might, and miraculous strength. It is the miraculous ability to perform. Mm -hmm. okay. So he says, I'm working according to a miraculous ability to perform that I put in you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. Many of you all want a miracle. But in this season, God says, you're going to work a miracle. I said that too fast. Some of you, if you can receive this word, you're about to shift from wanting miracles to working miracles. And baby, I ain't making it up. Jesus said it this way. And greater works shall you do. Ooh, okay. Help your neighbor real quick. Say neighbor. Neighbor. Where your greater works at? Where your greater works at? See, I know you think Pastor Mike going to do greater works because y'all think highly of me. But I'm going to turn the mirror on you. And I need you to think highly of yourself because the same spirit that raised Christ from yes, the dead sir. is the same spirit that resides in me and the same spirit that resides in you. And so if I can lay hands on the sick and they recover, baby, you can lay hands on the sick and they recover. If I can pray a thing and it comes to pass, as you can yes, pray a thing and it comes to pass. If I can prophesy a word from the Lord, maybe you can prophesy a word from the Lord. If I can believe God for the impossible, you can believe God for the impossible. He says it's the power, the miraculous ability to perform that I've put in you. But but it goes on, it says, according to the power, the dunamis that worketh. That word worketh is the word inner jail. That should sound familiar. Inner J O, inner inner G, inner J O, and and this word means work. However, uh, I told you that the Greek language is very picturesque. So when I went to help word studies, I discovered that it means to energize, but also working in a situation that brings it from one stage to the next. And the picture it gives is that it's like an electrical current energizing a wire, bringing it to a shining light bulb. Wow. That's so good. good. I'm glad somebody got it. Ah, he says, I'm going to do it according to the miraculous ability to perform. And it's going to enter J.O. in you. It's going to energize you and bring you from one situation to the next. Y'all are asking God to bring you out. God is saying, bring yourself out. Y'all are saying, God, make them disappear. God is saying, get up and walk away from them. Y'all are saying, God, block the message. God is saying, Get the courage to tell them to leave you alone. Y'all yeah, yeah, yeah. right. saying, yeah, God, sure. just make it disappear off social media. Yeah. God saying, block and report them to Mark Zuckerberg. Yeah. He's trying to get us from a place Hallelujah. where we're wanting miracles 
to working miracles because there's a power that's at work in you. Okay, can I tell you what blows my mind? Is that we serve a God who blows our mind through us. Yes, sir. Talk about it. Yes, sir. Talk about it. He says, now unto him who's able to blow your mind through your hands. Okay, y'all ain't been walking with God long enough. Have you ever been in a situation where you did something and then you stepped back and looked at what you did and said, my God, that was because there was a power at work in you. You couldn't do it on your own. You couldn't figure it out on your own. And this is why at the end of it, all you could say was to God, be the glory. Because it wasn't by your power. It wasn't by your might. It was by the spirit. Can I tell you the power that's at work in you is the power of the Holy Ghost. And when you got the power of the Holy Ghost, nothing is impossible for you. There is a power at work. I thought I was in a church. There is a power at work in you where you don't just keep looking to the hills from what's coming through your help. But you start looking inside recognizing that the same God that sits on the throne is the same God that sits on your heart. Is there anybody here today that's willing to tap into the power that's at work in you? I'm not telling you to stop praying. I'm just saying change your prayers. Stop asking God to do everything and trust that God has given you the power to do something. I'll make this plain. We're going home. I was at work one day. And uh, now y'all know I, I love Samsung products. I got Samsung watch. You got a Samsung phone. This is a Samsung tablet that I'm preaching from. I judge your mama. I, I love Samsung. I love Samsung. And I stand on business when it comes to Samsung. I do. I'm a rep on I am. I love Samsung. Well, some of my coworkers also uh, love Samsung. I remember I was at work one day, and, and one of the techs on my team, he has the same smartwatch. He said, hey, yo, Mike, do you, do you have your smartwatch charger? I need to charge my watch. I said, sure thing. I went in my book bag, and I handed him the charger. But here's the dilemma that I faced. After I handed him the charger, I happened to look at my watch, and I realized that my watch was dying. Now, I ain't want to be what we used to call back in the day an Indian giver. <laughs> That's so not politically correct, <laughs> but I didn't, right. I didn't want to be an Indian giver, and, and, and so I had a dilemma, but, but it was in that moment that I remembered something, that, that I have a Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5, and one of the features of the Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5, y'all about to get real mad at me, Apple users, one of the great features of this Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 5 is that it has the ability to share its battery. <laughs> but there's more. But here's the thing. Here, here's the thing. It can only do it if I activate the setting. Okay. Wow. So I went into my settings and I activated the feature. And I took my watch off and slapped it on the back of my phone. And when I slapped it on the back of my phone, something amazing happened. This year. There was a power at work in my phone that I didn't know. But because I activated the power at work in the phone, it changed my situation. What was dying started living again because the power at work within my phone. Yes, sir. Baby, if you think that's impressive, I got good news. You ought to step up on your feet, lift up holy hands, and give God praise because there's a power at work in my phone, but there's a power at work in you. And if you would activate your setting, God would do mighty works. God would do miraculous works. God would do magnificent works. But, and y'all used to laugh at our sister who was singing that song, Holy Spirit Activate. Baby, you got to activate it. Yes. And I came all the way to 82 Afton Parkway, Portsmouth, Virginia, 23702 to activate the power that's at work in you. Some of you have things dying around you only because you haven't activated the power at work 
within you. You have relationships that are dying because you won't activate the power at work that's within you. Some of you are living below your means because you won't activate the power at work within you. Some of you should have opportunities and seats at tables you can't even imagine, but you're not activating the power at work within you. And here's the good news. The, the way to activate that power at work in you is very simple. Yes. 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 I know you wanted something yes. profound. Yes. I know you wanted a three-step process. Yes. But but if you would give God a yes, yes. yes. he would activate yes, Lord. the power yes. of the Holy Spirit yes. in you. Yes. So that those things that are dying around yes. you yes, would have life again. Yes. Because there's a power at work within you. Yes, Some of y'all would blow my phone up a whole lot less <laughs> if you would activate the power Amen. at work. Yes, within you, Lord. some of you could save some money from all these conferences you're going to. If you would activate the power at work within you, some of you, your bookshelves would be a whole lot lighter because you wouldn't have to buy all these books telling you how to do things when God has already put the power at yes, work within you. Some of you would stop begging God for certain things. Uh, and when he's trying to get you to realize that there's a power at work in you. Amen. Our God is mind blowing. Because he's able. He does above and beyond. Mm -hmm. He works according to the power at work in us. But again, like a good spade's hand, I got a possible. But wait. But wait, there's more. You can take your seats. <laughs> Bishop, there has to be a response to this. And the response to God's ability to blow our mind should always be amen. 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 I ain't making it up. Verse 21 says... Unto him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus throughout all ages, world without end. Amen. Amen. Let's break this thing down. Amen. He says, um, God has the ability to blow our mind. And because he has the ability to blow our mind, we ought to give him glory in the church. Okay, can, can I can I serve an indictment to the American church? That there ought to never be a Sunday you ain't got a praise. I already hear y'all, already hear y'all. But Pastor Mike, you don't know my life. You don't know what I went through this week. I what 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 uh Tamla man say, I'm all churched out. I ain't got nothing left. Now unto him who is able. Uh, but, but Pastor Mike, you don't know how mad they made me now unto him who is able. Uh, but you don't know how bad they talked about me now unto him who is able. Unto him be glory. This word glory is the word kabod. That word kabod, uh, it means the weight. To add weight and value to a thing. He says, unto this God who's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask a thing through a power that works in us, the only response is glory. In essence, there are, every Sunday you ought to be putting weight on God. Y'all missed it. Every Sunday, you are, what am I saying? There ought to be so much praise coming from this church that we're literally adding weight to, that God ought to be weighed down by the praise that we give him. Well, why are we praising him? Because he does exceed abundantly. Above, okay, in essence, here's what's happening. You ought to put weight on God because of his ability to put weight on you. He says, unto him be glory in the church. By Christ Jesus, watch this, throughout all ages. Okay. That baby been making noise the whole service. Because all ages. Yeah. And this is why Jesus says, except you enter the kingdom of God as a little child. Yeah. They trying to show. See, y'all agitated because y'all like, I can't hear the word. The baby like, I feel the word. Yeah. And I'm going to give God glory out of the mouths of babes. The Bible says he's perfected praise. And if you would get off of your agenda of coming to the house of the Lord to get something and instead be focused on giving something, that baby wouldn't bother you because the baby's doing what it's supposed to be doing. 
Amen. throughout all ages and not just all ages throughout the world. Amen. That word amen in the Hebrew is amen. 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 It's a Hebrew word. <laughs> amen is amen. And it can be translated truly, but it can also be translated. So let it be. So let it be. So let it be. My God. Amen. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think according to the power that works in us. So God, let it be. Amen. Amen. When God starts doing the miraculous and the impossible through you, your only response ought to be, amen. I'm not going to grieve the Holy Spirit. Let me help you. I'm, I'm not going to remember that I don't have a theology degree when God wants to give a word through me because the Holy Spirit is greater than a theology degree. That, that I ain't going to trip, that I don't have a title in the church. When somebody is sick at the hospital and I can't reach the pastor, I'm going to go lay hands myself and anoint them with oil because uh, the Holy Spirit is greater than any title I can get in the church. The only response to God moving on you and through you by way of the Holy Spirit ought to be let it be. So let it be. And if you are here today and you're believing God for the impossible, I want to encourage you. He's able to do exceeding abundantly above all we can ask or think. If you can ask it, it still ain't big enough. If you can conceive it, it still ain't big enough. And don't put it off of you because maybe he wants to do it through you. And that's my encouragement to those of you who've been believing and asking God for certain things and you know he's able, but he's not doing it. Can I offer you an alternative response that if God is not doing it and you know he's able, maybe he's trying to wake you up to show that baby you're just as able to do it. Yes. And I believe we're moving into a time where God is saying, I'm not getting up off the throne for any and every little thing. Y'all been walking with me long enough. Stop praying it away and just walk away. Stop praying for it to shut up and you tell it to shut up. Stop, stop praying for peace and take your peace back. Somebody say, he's able. And because he's able, I'm able.